Hello. Good morning. I'm really thankful for this opportunity here to talk about my work and a few thoughts on design, my take on design here. Um, thanks to Home Review and the sponsors. I'm Karima and I'm going to talk about building blocks. I'm a furniture designer and uh, I'm working from Goa for a company called Ethos and uh, I'm designing place for furniture. I'm here to talk about building blocks. I studied building science and technology at SEPT, but uh, I think all the five years that I spent there, I did not connect to the two words science and technology as much as I connected to the word build. Build means to make and to create. But uh, for me, build meant something that I could do with my own hands. And I had to find a scale that was more manageable than buildings. So furniture design was really my calling. And uh, I got a little discouragement from friends and family saying that maybe you should try management because design is a big switch. But uh, I thought management would have been a bigger switch. So they came to design the company. But actually the switch wasn't very easy because I remember my first design project when I went from table to table from one architect colleague to another architect colleague asking, so where do I start from? How do you design? And uh, I thought you have these facts and survey and material and measured drawings and you put them all together and there you get a chair. But uh, over time I've realized it's actually my experiences, the kind of people I meet, the society I come from, the products I use every day, they all make me. I am because I have had those experiences. And that develops my way of thinking. And that's why my design is the way it is. So everybody thinks differently. Everybody in this room thinks differently. And we may agree, we may disagree. But I think it's all right to disagree at point and say, this is me. So there are some reference points, uh, reference points in a design. And uh, I think material, reused material, reclaimed material, client brief, these are some, uh, sorry, not client brief, materials and processes are some physical givens. And uh, my inspiration, my experiences are the backdrop. But what we are trying to achieve is what the user needs and how the user behaves. So it's almost like the designer has a kit, a ready-made kit. You have your materials, you have processes, you have experiences and inspiration, but you have to achieve what the user needs. And uh, I think to make a connection with the user, um, I feel we need to, we as designers need to tease them a little and give them a chance to imagine, which a perfectly designed object may deny you of these days because everything is so simplified. And um, it's, it's the user that completes the product, what it is. And uh, the sense of being involved in a design process is what makes the connection with the user. And uh, if you put all these things together and at the end what you achieve is something pleasing to the eye and for your experience, it is bound to be one of the favorite things that a uh, user will possess. So I'm talking about things that let you imagine and I think these are a few means with which you create. And, uh, Lego is one example, mechano, jigsaw puzzles, building blocks. These are all play objects, sure, but uh, they still give you a chance to imagine. So this is an image of a Lego land, and there are as many adults as kids in this image. And uh, it's very fascinating uh, that you know, sometimes your design is so successful that the designer is forgotten. And if you're a successful designer, your design is bigger than you. It's just a thought. Uh, it has nothing to do with my presentation, but it's really fascinating that if I'm a successful designer one day, I would want my designs to be more famous than me. So little facts there. Uh, Lego was founded in 1934 by a Danish person, Kirk Christensen. And, uh, it's just a combination of the two words like go, which means play well. But when he named the company, he didn't know that in Latin it meant I put together. And that's the idea behind the company, creating some really nice stuff out there. They've developed fully functional machines using Lego. 
these are some art installations done using Lego. The Lego Land has a car which is actually made of Lego. So it takes you around the whole park. Now Lego has uh, formed the understanding, uh, has formed the basis of my understanding of modularity and uh, customization. I think people do appreciate modularity in many ways and would love to have, these are not products that I design, these are off the internet. Uh, they love to customize furniture and make them use for more than one purpose. Uh, there are some designers who have inspired me a lot and uh, I'm talking about people who exist around here and not, they're not from the past. Uh, Ronan and Irvin Bourdieu. And then there are some lesser known people who are indulging in uh, customization and modularity. I'll get into more serious stuff which is my work. Uh, this piece is called Tutu which is a ballet dress. And this was a folding uh, furniture module in school. And uh, it's a stool which has used one component repeatedly to form the stool. And uh, it folds into a single seat and it folds, spreads out to form a floor mat. And you remove the seat and keep it in the center and that becomes a table. It was inspired by origami. And, uh, it was actually developed for public spaces, but I had to scale it down to make it myself in the lab. So it's a single seat now. Now this was my final project as a student at NID, and uh, it's called Elbow. Now this is where I think my uh, thinking got stronger, and this was my Lego block. This was a project which was commissioned to outreach programs by Tripura government. Um, it involved a lot of study. I went to the field, studied the skill level of the craftsmen. Uh, these are mostly woven patterns. That's an animal cage, uh, basketry, tukris. Then these are the kind of products that get to the urban emporia. And uh, I got an opportunity to do a product shoot for them. So these are images from that. Then there are interventions like industry, which is a combination of uh, profit and non-profit sector. But most of these pieces were limited to weaving and uh, home accessories. My idea was to develop a system and the journey from material to product was long. It was very long. And uh, the material was bamboo. The picture in the center is the system. and picture on the right is the final product. The journey included material study, process study, field study, some failed examples, some successful examples, which is the system here, and uh, product conceptualization, and then offshoots of that, what you could do with one block. So this is my system, and it's made of uh, bamboo splits put back to back, which means you're using the outer skin on both the sides. and uh, when you compress, uh, when you give this bend a compress, uh, compression uh, force, it's incredibly strong. So I think this was maybe three fourths into the project when I achieved this, and from there on the journey was slightly simpler. Uh, the stools here at the bottom were the two prototypes I made uh, of the many concepts that I've done. Uh, this is the final product. And uh, that's the craftsman, uh, Shubhato, who helped me make the prototype. Now, uh, I believe in designs that are less imposing in terms of visuals, and they leave you with an experience as uh, opposed to an image. And um, I would want to be surrounded by a design that makes a connect with the designer. I would want to be connected with the user instead of, you know, the various people visiting him or her. So my piece could be in the corner of a room and may not be the centerpiece of the room. That's my take on design. That's the final form and a few details. Uh, it had a spacer using bamboo again, bound with cane. And uh, as you can see, there are two splits back to back and joined in a half flat. It was followed by a workshop in Tripura and uh, 
I'm trying to follow it up with the craftsmen if they were if they are willing to make my stool. Uh, and it was very encouraging actually through the project stools and he said, I'm making these stools myself. So I said, please hang on, just wait for my jury. And it's encouraging to see that the craftsmen adapted to my product and they were willing to make it. That's another stool. It's using the same L bend. Similar concepts. And I started starting the child behavior and they love marking around. They are fascinated with enclosures. You put them in a big room and they'll create smaller spaces inside. And uh, they love to communicate in different ways. They write anything and everything. So I came up with this product called the tunnel. And uh, these are again modular pieces that can be put together to make something bigger. They could make tunnels, they could make columns. This is how I see they, they will use it. It's at the prototype level, so we haven't really tested it. There are some sporty bottles and there are some bottles which don't even have a strap. So yeah, these are three different ways you can dock or you can hang a bottle like that. That's a small prototype. It's being tested in the school. I think that's a product that uh, that went for the finals for design by, and it again uses one uh, leg replicated and put together without any use of hardware. 